We are presently in the Omer period. Um, the Omer actually brings forth two halachic concepts um, attached to this period. One is the Korban Omer, which really was was brought on the uh, second day of Pesach, and it was the a uh, barley sacrifice. Really marked the first bringing of the first barley crops. They used to go out the evening right after the first day of the holiday of Pesach, first day of Yontif of Pesach. And uh, they harvested barley, and that was brought the next day, Tuesday, of the, the, the Omer sacrifice. And it was brought into the base of Mignish of old. And uh, in Bimheri, the Biamena should be rebuilt. And then there's another aspect of the Omer, which is more common understanding of the Omer, which is the counting of 49 days from Pesach to Shavuot. Basically, there's a, a lot of different reasons. Uh, well, why we count the 49 days that are presented in literature. Basically, it was, uh, B'nai Israel said, okay, when when are we getting to the next step after they left Egypt, according to one Medrash? And Moshe Rabbeinu said, listen, on the 50th day, that's when we're getting the Torah. And the people were all excited and so forth. And and, and the morale of probably mentions as well that originally, the, the time of Omer was uh, somewhat of a happy time. It was looking forward to Kabbalah to Torah. It was a time of preparation. It was also the time of the early harvest, which shouldn't, which ties a little bit to another reason for the count of 50 days, which is the 50th day being Shavuot, a count of, we count 49. Um, the, the idea of we should uh, keep in mind where we are in terms of Shavuot, especially since, you know, back in, the, in, in ancient Israel, people were in the field, and they wanted to keep uh, in touch with how many days, so they know that they, they just came back from from Yerushalayim and Pesach, they had to know when to go up to Yerushalayim again and Shavuot. So they were sort of counting the days because they were concerned. We get too involved in our in our in our work in the field, we won't remember that we gotta get ready for Shavuot. So Doraisa we were told from the Torah we were told to count forty nine days in anticipation of of Shavuot of the creating of the Torah. But what has occurred over the what has occurred is that during this period of 49 days, we now have a minor observance of of a lute, of mourning, and the reason for this is because 12,000 pairs of students of Rabbi Akiva died during this period of time, and we we are sad because of that, and we mourn the loss of this whole generation of of the scholars of Rabbi Akiva and the Gemara and Yavamis. This is a a statement the morning of Amos in uh, on Samach Beit on the Beit 62b that um, basically there was a, a, a total you know desolation in the, Jew, in, in the Jewish world of Torah until Rabbi Kiva went down south and created five and had five new students which became the bastions of the Mishnah. So what happens is is that. During this time, the loss of 24,000 students, 12,000 pairs, is remembered. And we have some form of mourning. And this form of mourning is we uh, do not uh, shave or take haircuts. Um, we refrain from simcha, from, from joyous occasions, from music, um, different aspects. There's always little halachic disagreements on the exact formulation of it. It's actually 33 days of 49, and there's different customs of what 33 days we are careful not to not to cut our hair, whether it's the first 33 days, the last 33 days. The the uh, the Sephardim um, actually are, are actually very careful that, it's, that, that they don't cut their hair until the 34th day. And there's certain people that during the whole 49 days, they take off certain specific 17 days um, of the of the 49 or, or or you know and therefore that it comes out to be that 33 days are left that they observe mourning. Um, I guess it's like 16 and a half really because the key point is is that Lagba Omer, the day of the 33rd day, is actually marked as a day of a little bit of simcha, and um, you're allowed to cut your hair on Lagba Omer um, after. Um, after morning, you can't cut your hair in the evening, and then you can, you can have weddings and things of that nature as well, like simchas and stuff like that. So the point is, is is that the Omer period is marked by a certain avelis, and Lagba Omer, which was the day that the that the um, um, the plague that hit Rabbi Kiva's students stopped, 
it was only, it ended a few days, you know, 17 days before Shavuot. Therefore, we mark that, and we have a little bit of joy on that day, and uh, that's that's Lagba Omer. And so, therefore, that that explains both the biblical source of this holiday, the counting of 49 days in anticipation of Shavuot, and the shift because of this loss of Rabbi Akiva. Uh, students, because the loss of Rabbi Kiva's students, we now have a mark of a little bit of Velas, but we have that mark of hope for the future in 32 on the Lagba Omer that um, we we you know are happy that the plague stopped, and significantly it's all an aspect of of learning Torah, the loss of 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 of, uh, of Eretz Yisrael, you know weakens our ability to learn Torah back in the Corbin by Shani in terms of the destruction of the temple, and um, this is included in the, you know, therefore we are anticipating moving towards Torah, but in this movement towards Torah of uh, of Shavuot, we have to recognize that there's going to be, you know, uh, problems, bumps in the road, if you would say, and in a certain way, we had this major, um, major, um, you know, um, uh, detour in the war or in the road, or a major roadblock in terms of the loss of the of the students of Rabbi Akiva, and um, Torah was lost and desolate. But then that only takes up the f- you know 33 of the four, of the 49 days, seven, 17 days. We then turned around and went back to Torah, and that's what really Lagbomer says. We can move from how far far our depths are away from Torah. We can move forward. Um, into anticipation of Shavuot and Kabbalat the Torah and receiving the Torah. There's a classic act, a question that is asked about the Avelis, the morning during the Omer period. And from that question, we have tremendous insight into certain aspects of Jewish thought on the relationships between individuals and the ultimate ideal of a Jewish society. During the Omer period, we are told that 12,000 pairs of Rabbi Akiva's students, 24,000 students, perished during 33 days during the Omer period. And the Gemara in Yavamas explains the reason that they died was because Shlonahugo covered Zet Lazet. They did not show respect one to each other. Many people ask that they find this unbelievable that the Talmidim, the students of Rabbi Akiva, would not know how to behave one to the other. Why? Because Rabbi Akiva says in, in, in the Medrash, he says, what's the Klal Gadol what's, B'Torah? What's the, what's the major axiom of, of, of the Torah? It's V'Hafta L'Recha Kamocha, to love your neighbor as yourself. Ava, love. So it's unbelievably questioning that the students of Rabbi Akiva, 24,000 students of Rabbi Akiva, whose prime maxim in life was to love your neighbor, did not properly respect each other. And a lot of people have this question. Now, to fully understand this question, we have to look at another concept in terms of Avelis. Mourning. We have community mourning, public mourning. Generally, every aspect of mourning on a public basis in terms of the Jewish community is really tied to Hurban Habayas, destruction of the temple, and and the 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 exile from Eretz Yisrael. Now, in this regard, there is a concept that you look at the Avelis. Tish above, there's an Avelis aspect. The three weeks, there's an Avelis aspect of it. Beginning with Shivas Arbatamas. The, th- the idea of, 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 of uh, fast days, Sarbatavis and Somgadaya, they're all tied to destruction of the temple and the exile. Somgadaya being after the the destruction of the temple, when the Bukhadnetzer appointed Gedaliah as the as the governor of Eretz Yisrael, so at least we had some measure of autonomy, even after Nebuchadnezzar destroyed the temple, and 
and took over much of Eretz He appointed Gedaliah, a good person, to be the governor, and he was assassinated. So there was another, another falling down of the Jewish people, in the sense that the Gullahs that came right after the exile, that came right after the temple, now went through a worse period, with the fact that we lost a good governor as well. That usually is what marks our days of Avelis. And if you look at the Omer, we today are selling the, celebrating, or marking, I shouldn't say celebrating, marking the Avelis, the morning, because 24,000 students of Rabbi Yekiva died. Well, there are other times of persecutions of Jewish people. There was other times that there was tremendous loss of life in the Jewish people. Why specifically these 24,000? Why specifically at this time of the Omer? And why is Shlodahu go kavod zelazeh? They didn't show respect one to each other. Why is that so significant? Well, let's let's step back for a second and look at this Omer period. It's very interesting. We all know that the days of of of, of Avelis are 33 days of the 49, and the key day is Lagba Omer. Lagba Omer is a day that shifts. It's a day that goes from the sadness into a day of Simcha especially since many people couldn't get married for, for the days before. Lag Bomer becomes the day to get married. How does this happen? Because the the plague ended. Well, that means that, okay, so the bad thing happens, you know, stops. So, you know, Baruch Hashem, the bad thing stops. But is that a day of Simcha? So you have to look at other reasons for Lag Bomer. And one of the other reasons of Lag Bomer is that it is the yurt site, Yom Hilula, of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai being the great mystic, who was a Talmud of Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva, after his 24,000 students died, and there was a total desolation in terms of Torah in the world, he went south, and he found his five major students that became the pillars of Torah into the future. And one of them is the famous Rabbi Shimon. In the term of the Mishnah, you see Rabbi Shimon Omer. That Rabbi Shimon is Rabbi Shimon Bar Yechai, the author of the Zohar. But if you know about Shimon Bar Yechai, what was he noted for? Well, he wrote the Zohar, but what's the famous story of Shimon Bar Yechai? Shimon Bar Yechai hid out in the cave for 14 years because of the persecution of the Romans. Because the Romans, under the Hadrianic persecutions, said that Jews could not learn Torah publicly. So Rabbi Shimon and his son hid away in a cave, and they learned privately by themselves, but they, they basically learned Torah and they continued the Torah. The point is, is that once you invoke the concept of Shem Baruchai, you invoke the concept of the Roman Hadrianic persecutions. And when you think of the Roman Hadrianic persecutions, and you think of Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Akiva was a spiritual mentor of Bar Kochba. You have to think of where the next shoe dropped in the sadness of Jewish history. After the Churban Vayesheni, after the destruction of the Second Temple, the next great downfall, the sad reality of the Jewish people that happened in the persecution of the Romans was in the Bar Kochba Rebellion. We wish to have a state again. We almost were successful in the rebellion. But with that rebellion, the Romans increased their persecution of the Jewish people. They attacked the Torah. And they destroyed, you know, they, they killed, they, they tortured to death Rabbi Akiva, the great sage of the Jewish people. In a certain way, you think about this, Lagba Omer has also become, um, more colloquially, the day that we remember the Bar Kokhba Rebellion. The day that we go out into the into, into the into the forests and uh, we shoot bows and arrows, and in in a in, in a in a safer I saw the reason we go into forests we shoot bows and arrows is because we are ready to um, to take on the enemies. Next time we're going to be victorious. In fact, I, I just read recently that there actually was a minog in certain communities to go out to the forest and shoot bows and arrows on Tishabov. So to be ready for the enemies of the Jewish people. Okay? It turns out that if you think about this, the Omer, 
Rabbi Akiva, Shem Baruchai, sadness, the way we celebrate Lagba Omer, there is an aspect of exile and destruction of the, table in, uh, of, of the temple in our Avelis, in our mourning of the Orma period. In a certain way, it reminds us of the Bar Kochba rebellion and the sadness of that, of that great loss as well. Now, if you think about that, you maybe now begin to understand the Gemara's wisdom in saying, what happened to the students of Rabbi Akiva? Shono Nahugu covered Zelaza. They did not show respect to each other. The Gemara tells us, the Gemara Gittin tells us that the reason for the destruction of the Second Temple was Sinat Chinam. Well, as many people say that that's purposeless ha- hatred, uh, as many people say that that's, that's a baseless hatred, I, tr- I, I choose to define Sinat Chinam as purposeless hatred. The, the 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 fact is we develop negative feelings to others. The question is not that we have negative feelings to others. The question is what we do with it. How do we take these negative feelings and develop into positive feelings? That's really the challenge of Sinus Chinam. The challenge of Sinus Chinam is to, uh, to sort of hide our negative feelings. The, the, the Pasuk in, in Vayikra says that, you know, don't maintain hatred in your heart because what's the worst thing? The guy who is two-faced. Oh, I love you. I care for you. I care for you. Then the minute, you know, he's away from you, can't stand that guy. But you never know it right in front of them. Why? Because you keep it inside you. You keep this negative feeling inside you. But if you go up to someone and say, you know, you did something that really bothered me and you're able to have a conversation, then you're able to say, hey, you know something? person sees in the chats explain themselves, you explain themselves, and it comes out that you're able to, 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 you know, to work it out. And that moves to the next level. The force them say that's why you can't hide your hatred, because you, you can't hide your negative feelings, because you have to go there and tell people what you're feeling, so you can move to the next level. And to do that, to do that means more than love. To do that also needs covet. See, there's a difference in the emotions between love and covet and honor. Love, you love someone. You want to help them out. But honor means you respect someone and you respect them as an identity separate from you. When it says that the Kaddish Baruch Hu gave us free choice, He loved us, He gave us free choice. It's a remarkable honor that the Kaddish Baruch Hu gave us. Because the argument is He loved us, well why didn't He put us directly into into, into Lom Haba, into the future world? Why didn't He put us directly into into, into a place where it's really, I love you, it's great, oh, it's great over here. Why? Because I respect you. Because the Kurdish Baruch Hu said, I want, to, I want respect to develop. I want human beings to make the decision to do the right thing. To have an independent will that I will respect, and therefore they will make decisions, hopefully in Mitzvah Hashem, to do the right thing. COVID necessitates a recognition that the other is not you. That the other is not just an extension of you. Covid is easy in, in the in, in, in times when you really love someone and you see that they're doing something wrong and you just want to impose upon them and say, I'm gonna make you do the right thing because I love you, yeah, it's an aspect of love. But you're not showing respect. And this is a really important concept in terms of moving to the level of real love. Because in terms of moving to the level of real love, it's a matter of seeing the other and relating to them and caring for them as another. That's why Naftali Sri Yehuda Berlin, the famed last Rosh Hashiva of the Lajan, said that Sinas Chinam, where did it start with? It started with Siddiquim calling, calling people they disagreed with heretics. Why? Because they didn't allow the other to have their own opinion within Torah. You're wrong. I'm not going to respect you. You're wrong. No. If you really, really care for someone and you disagree, you learn to disagree. And once you learn to disagree and you have respect for disagree in, in disagreement, then you learn to love. It's a famous Gemurian Kedushan. Vahav Basufa. Two people arguing the base measures ends up with love. Why? Because 
they respect each other and they respect each other trying to find the Ratz and Hashem, trying to find what the Torah means. And even though they disagree, they respect each other in their, achie- in their attempt to try and do what they both want to do, which is to find out the Ratz and Hashem, the will of God. So therefore, I am sure that the students of Rabbi Akiva cared tremendously for each other. But sometimes we have a bunch of people caring for each other. Each one wants to impose themselves. I know it's best to do this. Therefore, I'm going to make sure everyone does this. Yeah, it's because I love them. I want to make sure they don't make mistakes. Covet, honor means I have to respect another person. And that leads to true love. True love for the other. And love between two people who see themselves somewhat as distinct and caring. And that's really the lesson really tied into the whole concept of this Avelis period. It's a time that we have to recognize in the, in, in the move back to Eretz Yisrael because now I'm looking at the Omer that we're as, as, a, as, 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 a remember, as a memory, a remembrance of the Bar Kokhba Rebellion, which was the last shoot to fall in the total exile of the Jewish people after the destruction of the Second Temple. Now we have to come back from here. We have to develop covid salazah, honor for each other, respecting diverse opinions, leading to the Gemara and Kedushan saying Vahav Basufa from being able to, to see each other and, and share with each other even diversity, we can move to a love for each other. Diversity of course within Torah, within Halacha. The point is, is is that's where we can move to to love. And that applying the concept of the Nitziv we remove sinas chinam when we're able to respect divergent opinions within Torah. It starts with knowing, with, 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 with expressing kavod zelazat. And therefore, Lagba Omer, the day that we remember the Kochba rebellion, the day that we remember the people who brought back Torah into, into, the, Jew, in, into the world after its desolation, after the 24,000 students passed away, the five students of Rabbi Akiva, including Shimon Bar the movement back, this takes us to the beginning to take us back, and we understand we have to come back through Limad HaTara, through proper Limad HaTara, and it becomes part of the important lessons on our path to Shavuot and Kabbalat HaTorah. And there's an interesting side point that always hit me. You know, um, I'm not necessarily a big Zioni. Uh, I don't say Halal Yom Atzmud, I don't say Halal Yom Yerushalayim. Um, but uh, there's an interesting thought that, I, that always hit me, that the path back there to Israel, here during the Omer period, the two days that are now associated with the return to Eretz Israel, is Yom Atzmut and Yom Yerushalayim. Regardless of how we practice them in terms of, in terms of, you know, halachic practice on the day, but the fact is, is that they're both in the Omer. They really tell us that in a certain way, we have to come back from our Galus. And we have to make sure that we're in Noig Kavod Zelazeh and we defeat Sinas Chinam. And in a certain way, we come back from where that last lesson, lesson was Omer. Now we're going to come back from the Omer. And we come back through Ab Omer and Simcha during these 49 days to go back to the way it was in Eretz Yisrael before the destruction where the Omer were days of Simcha. Out of the Omer. 